There you go. Somebody saying this with their heart, it means much more. That's right. What a blessing. What a blessing. I want to thank God for his mercy and want to thank Pastor for giving us this opportunity to be here and what a blessing it is to meet Pastor and uh, with a good sense of nice spirit that uh, God has given him. We just talked just a few minutes in the, his office and uh, it was, uh, I, I rejoice, I, I, I enjoy so much when I hear from people that have a lot of experience. <clears throat> That's the right word. Is that right in English? A lot of experience. Is that, in better, instead of saying old man. That, that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. No, that's what I mean. That was the right. Yeah. <laughs> they have a lot of experience. I mean, that's what I. Oh, I'm getting in trouble here. Okay. We haven't taken that love off again. <laughs> and, and that good, um, I don't know. I, there's much words that I don't know in English, so. Um, you're going to hear some, maybe I'll start preaching in Spanish, and uh, well, let's go to, uh, uh, <laughs> many times has um, God's children, and we, we seem a lot like our own children. One of the, the most, and, and it repeats day after day, hour after hour, ye, minute after minute, what is the main question that our children always ask? Why? Oh, hey, wow, okay, I, you know that, huh? You know that, why, why? It's always, why? And you say, hey, let's do this. And, and then they say, why? And, okay, you do this, uh, and, and then they say, hey, mom, why? And mom, why me? And, and you know, that's how our children are. And has children of God, it seems that we do the same. Say, why? Why? Now I want to go a little fast, okay, because I, I, I'm, I'm not a long, uh, uh, well, long distance preacher. Uh, I won't go that far. I'm not a home run. I'm a, a kind of a uh, a single, double, uh, short, okay? They're used to that. Oh, they're used to it. They, they seem like they are, yeah. I told them, I told them, they, I told them we were going to go short and everybody smile. I said. <laughs> and we say, uh, Let's go to Matthew chapter 28. And I know that all missionaries go to this verse, and I'm not going to go very deep on this. I'll be very simple and try to be easy and try to be a blessing for, for all of you. Try to be a blessing. That's our focus when we are anywhere we are. Uh, try to be a focus. Uh, Matthew chapter 28. It says there, verse 19. Okay, it says there, verse 19, you, you all know this. Your pastor has preached on this verse, and I know you know this. It says, okay, now, I have it in Spanish, okay? I have this in Spanish, you have it in English. Okay, I'll read in Spanish. It says there, por tanto, id y hacer discípulos a todas las naciones, bautizándolos en el nombre del Padre y del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. You can say amen. <laughs> okay, now, well, okay, Let, let's get it in English, okay? I, I know you just keep looking at me like you said, what, what do you say? Okay, let me get it here. I got it here in the, in the path. Let me see. Okay, okay, Matthew, over here, okay. Matthew, I got it in Spanish, but I have to get it in English here. Okay, let me see, English, N-I-B, okay. <laughs> oh, no, no, Pastor, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Pastor. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Pastor, okay? <laughs> it's uh, King James, 1611. No other one, okay? That's it, okay? If you go for another Bible, just uh, ask God for forgiveness, okay? 
It says here. I hope it's in King James, this translation over here. Oops. Okay. You got it in English, okay? You understood what it says. Go. <laughs> I need to get it here. Okay. I'll get it here, Pastor. There you go. Okay. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Now, believe. I believe. This is my belief. I know that <laughs> you might think, well, hey, it, it, what's, what's going on, Pastor? Who did you invite it? Who did Pastor Jervo recommend it? <laughs> no. it, it? And I believe that for us Christians that have been saved for many years, or maybe you've been saved for uh, a week or two weeks or a month, uh, for us, we, we should not, pastors, preachers, uh, I, I, I hope you don't misunderstand what I'm trying to say, and, and, or I can make you understand what I'm trying to say, is we, we, should not, we should not be preaching this verse anymore. I know, I know. You're looking at me like, okay, let, let's get this right. What are you talking about, brother? Okay. When God gives an order, when do we have to obey? But why do we always ask like our children ask? What is it? But then we realize that's why we need to preach it. Keep on preaching on this. Because there's many of us that we, I know we love the Lord. But we need to be encouraged time after time. And that's why our lovely God left us this lovely word to be preached time after time. And to help us. And I want to, I'm not going to teach you about soul winning. I'm not, Always, why? Why is this? Why is that? God has told us, He says, This go ye therefore and teach all nations. And it's in here in Roseville, your, your Jerusalem, around Roseville, is your Judea, uh, over there, uh, other side of the states, is your, your uh, Samaria, and then to the othermost part of the world. That's where God wants us to go share the gospel. And then, so, so I'll, I'll preach on why should I share the gospel to others? Why should I share the gospel to others? Let me go see, first of all, first of all, it says there, um, it says, verse 18, it says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me, where, where, where at? In heaven and in earth. Let me give you right away four reasons. We're going to ask you, we're going to give an answer for each one of these why. Why should I go share the gospel to others? First of all, because God said so. And that should be everything. This should be all. This should be okay. He said, okay, uh, Brother Perez, Pastor, that was all it. Okay, I've never been in a message for three minutes, five minutes. We should close our Bibles and start getting forward to the altar and say, God, forgive me because I have not been obedient. Now, if you're going out there so and praise the Lord for you, you're a blessing. And I don't, I don't, I not, and this message, message is not because none of you go out so winning. No, no, no. I'm not saying that. I just want to be encouraged because the devil always puts in our mind, why should I? Yeah. Why? Not only the devil, our own flesh puts in our mind, why? I'm tired. Uh, why should I go? Why doesn't he go? Why don't they, why doesn't, don't, don't pastor and his family go out so winning? It, it's, why do I have to go? Because God said so. And when God said so, we have to understand He's our Lord. Is that right? Yeah. And the word Lord is not, is not hard to understand. It means He's our Master. It means that we belong to Him. It's right. it's, it's, it means that He says and we obey. And then He says, when, when He says jump, we don't ask how high. We ask on the air, on the air, we ask 
how high you want me to jump. It's when God says, let's do it, we don't ask why. So he's the master. He's the one that gives the orders. We belong to him. I belong to him. So it was easy for him to say, hey, let me tell you before I read 19 and tell you to go preach to all nations, let me tell you something. Verse 18, all power is given to me. All authority, all authority, all authority. Where at? In heaven and here in Rossville. Is that right? He's given me all authority to tell you what I need to tell you. We belong to him. We are his property. But let me say it, okay, this should be enough for us. And I, I, I don't know why, but I need to be listening to this once after another after another. Right. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Let's go to verse um, 40, 40, um, 45, John chapter 1, 45. It says there, Philip findeth Nathanael and said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write. Who was this? Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. We had found him. We know who he is. Here he is. And, and what did Philip do? Let, 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 me, let me share here. Philip went and go look for Nathanael. How is it in English, Pastor? Nathaniel. Nathaniel. Okay, you got it, Pastor. Why should I share the gospel to others? First, because God said so. Second, because somebody else shared the gospel to you. So simple. Because somebody else shared the gospel to me. If, 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 if we, we not, sometimes we don't realize, and, and that happens to me. I'm talking about me. That sometimes I don't realize that I didn't deserve to be saved. I don't deserve to have an opportunity to hear the gospel at least. I don't deserve, not, I'm not part of the, that say, well, uh, and sometimes we live that way, and we say, well, I think that I'm not that bad at all. If I wouldn't been saved here, I would have been saved over there somewhere else. If I wouldn't been saved uh, um, today, I would have been saved tomorrow. We don't know. Praise the Lord, somebody shared the gospel to us. So praise the Lord, somebody knocked on our door and said, hey, I invite you to go to church. Well, I was not saved by that person. I was saved because I came to church, but somebody invited you to come to church. And you heard preacher, the pastor, and somebody shared the gospel to you. Maybe somebody, your parents or, or your relatives or your grandpa or your grandma, somebody was not selfish. Somebody was praying for you. Maybe you don't even know who. But number, somebody was praying for you. So maybe somebody uh, uh, many years ago, very far away, maybe in England, maybe in Holland, maybe over there somebody was praying for America. But somebody took time to share directly or un indirectly to share the gospel with you. Somebody took time to go and, and print out and said, well, Brother John, I will say because I found the track. It was, a, it, it was on the table there, and I read it, and I was saved. Yeah, but somebody took their money to print out that gospel track. Somebody took out his own time. Maybe he came home from work. Maybe they come home from, from, from school, and they were tired. Maybe mama was there at home. You know, mama works more at home than <laughs> any other place. Mama's tired, fixing up, preparing food, uh, getting ready the kids, uh, getting the meals for the husband, and mama was tired. But somebody, somebody 
share the gospel to you. One way or another, somebody shared the gospel to you. Somebody took time. Somebody took from their effort. Somebody took from their energy. Somebody took from their money. And praise the Lord for that. That's why, that's why I should share the gospel to others. Because somebody else shared the gospel to me. Right. If you think that you are saved because you are good looking, maybe you said, wow, I thought I was saved, Pastor, because I'm a very good looking. No. I'll tell people, I'll tell people there, if we were been saved because we are good looking, what am I going to do in alone in heaven? <laughs> and they do the same when I say that. They laugh at me. Okay, we'll leave it like that, okay? Isn't that, isn't that wonderful that we were saved because somebody else shared the gospel? Somebody else witnessed to your grandpa? Somebody else witnessed to your uncle, to your aunt, to your children, to your dad? Wasn't that wonderful? Second generation, I see pastor, his third generation or fourth generation, I don't know how many generations that's been blessed. So we don't take that for granted. That's why I should go and share the gospel to others. And let me give you one more. Um, <clears throat> let's go to number three. I only have uh, well, this one, the first, po uh, first, first point. That's how you say it, point? Yeah, second point. Okay, <clears throat> I can go through the third point, or I can jump to the 20th point. <laughs> no, I don't have many points here. <laughs> but let me tell you something. Luke, chapter 16. And you know what it says, and you know what it talks about. Sometimes I feel bad with my own self, myself, about how I live my Christian life, how I act in my Christian life. And I feel and I am ashamed sometimes, many times, of what my life is uh, projecting to my Lord. We should go and share the gospel to others because God said so, because somebody else shared the gospel to me. Third, we should share the gospel because there is a place called call hell. Now, do we believe this? Do we really believe it? Chapter 16, verse 33, 23, 23 says, And in hell, it says, uh, let's I'll read in Spanish, so, sus ojos, estando en tormentos. He was in torments. What did he say? He lifted up his eyes when he was in hell, and, and he was in torments. Now, do we believe this? <laughs> Maybe outside we are dressed like a Baptist, but inside we have a kind of a heart of a Jehovah Witness. Jehovah yeah, yeah. Witness don't believe there's a place called hell. No, they don't. You might ask, why are they out there? That's, that's another story. Why are they out there preaching what they believe? But we believe it. It's, it's, different, it's different to say or to think that we believe in a place called hell. And it's a lot different to say and to act that we believe there's a place called hell. There is a place where people, people, is this place is real. This place is tormentous. This place is eternal. This place will, 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 is real. And we have to feel it and say, Lord, what's going on with me? What's going on in my life? Why do I, I don't want to share the gospel? Why do I struggle so much? Why do I have a, I'm tired always to go out so many. Why do I just don't feel like it? It's not what you feel. It's what we believe, what we really believe. If you believe it, you do it. Right. If I believe it, I would do it. If somebody 
mean that we don't believe. I believe there's a place called hell, but my life has to project that I really yes. believe there's a place called right. hell. And praise the Lord, I'm not going there, but I don't want to be selfish in my life. Sometimes, many times, I've been selfish. And that's a shame for me. That's embarrassing. That's not good for me. Why should I share the gospel to others? Because there is a place called hell. John chapter 9. should believe this and and I know this precious church uh, uh, pastor I know they you preach this and you believe this but we should be practicing what we believe Amen. people are dying around us friends our neighbors our parents relatives family And they're going to go for eternity and be there. Let me finish with this right away. Chapter 9, verse 4, book of John. It's going to be a very simple message just to encourage you, not to make you feel bad. Uh, that's not my my purpose somebody's going to make you feel bad that's going to be the Holy Spirit but not me I want to encourage you to help to be a blessing in your life it says John chapter 9 verse 4 I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day the night come when no man can work Let me tell you the fourth reason why we should share the gospel to others. First, because God said so. Second, because somebody else shared the gospel to me. Third, because there's a place called hell. And fourth, because we're running out of time. We're running out of time. When you're in heaven, if your time runs out, when you're in heaven, there, we should do this while we have time here, while we have our friends there, because maybe they'll change your partner where you work at. They'll change them to Tennessee or to Arizona or to some other city or country, and then you are not going to have that opportunity anymore. But not only time is going to run out that way, maybe you will go be with the Lord. And praise the Lord. If, you, if we go, I mean, it, it's hard when we miss somebody and, and we go in the presence of the Lord. But who's going to witness to that very close friend? We should use our time while it's daytime. Because it, it could be that tomorrow in heaven... Let me tell you, how much people can you witness when you are in heaven? How many people can you witness here on earth? And the rich man lifted up his eyes and he saw Lazaro up there. He said, oh, send Lazaro. He said, no. <laughs> how many of your relatives or family have not been born again? You know them, your mom, your dad, your grandpa, your uncle, your cousin, your neighbor, your friend at school, your friend at work. How many of them have not been saved? And the time is running out not only for us, but it's running out for them. How many of you heard last week about this baseball player, Jose Fernandez? He was only, only 24 years old. He had a whole future before him. A lot of money. Hey, he's gone. I don't know if they witnessed to him. Might did. I don't know. Their time is running off. 
oh, oh, t tomorrow, tomorrow, we'll go tomorrow. In Mexico, that's what we use, mañana, mañana. When the day of salvation is, when is the day of salvation, Corinthians says? Today, now. We're running out of time. Our precious Lord Jesus Christ, we don't know what time, what day, we don't know nothing of that, but we know that He's coming, He's coming soon. We believe that. And when He comes, praise the Lord, you and I will be with Him in heaven. But what's going to happen with all those loved ones that we have? And even if we don't know them, but we have the opportunity to share the gospel to them and we didn't do it. Realize when I, years I made this message that this was going to happen to me. And like you said, shame on me. Yeah, shame on me. I decided maybe too late to go look for my friends from college. It was a public college in Mexico. I knew him when I was in high school. I was not in the ministry. Maybe I can say and I can use as an excuse that I was not saved then. But there's no excuse because I was saved after that. I went to his house, to his mother's house, where we used to get together and do some homework there. He was very smart, so I always go and stick with him because he, he knew a lot of, uh, he was very smart. And I said, okay, let's get this homework done. And, and you know, I went to Logo for him last year. I saw his, somebody came out and said, do you know uh, Salvador? He says, oh yeah, I'm his sister. Oh, your sister, okay. I told him who I was and I told him what I'm doing now. and. Uh, and, and I asked him, well, where, where can I find him? He said, he passed away two years ago. That's hard and embarrassing to say. Because I believe this, I preach this, sometimes I don't practice it. I have no excuse. Lord, why? Why? You want me? I've been in church for only a month. Praise the Lord. I've been in church. You want me to go? There, can't Pastor go and his staff and the, the faithful man there and the faithful woman? No. If you've been saved, this commandment from Matthew 28 is for you too. God loves you so much that he gave it to you. Why should I share the gospel to others? First, because God said so. Second, because somebody else shared the gospel to me. Third, because there's a place called hell and it's real and it's eternal. eternal. And fourth, because we're running out of time. Why don't we come to the Lord this evening? Come forward and say, Lord, shame on me. I'm sorry, Lord. You're my Lord, you're my master, and, and I, <laughs> I'm your slave, I'm your property, I'm your son, I'm your children, I'm your daughter, I belong to you. And I always get upset when my son or with my daughter always asks me, why should I do it? Son, do this and do that. Daughter, hey, you take out the God. Why me? We should come to the God tonight and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I don't say it with my mouth, but I say it in my heart. Why? Why should I go? And I'm not saying about so winning Saturdays at 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock in the morning or Friday. I said, wherever you are, yeah. wherever you are, 
you have an opportunity to share a gospel, open a conversation, maybe if it's not today, uh, God allows them for tomorrow, but open, open your heart to share the gospel to them, to share the gospel with them. Say, Lord, I don't know how to witness. Give me wisdom. Maybe you're here tonight and you have not been born again. I don't know this lovely church. I don't know every people. But if you have not been born again, you're running out of time. Maybe this is your opportunity. Pastor will come and, and do the invitation for salvation or for get right with the Lord. Say, Lord, help me. Help me. Let's stand up, please. And we have a, let's have a word of prayer. Pastor will come up here and he's going to lead. Whatever God has put in your heart, whatever God has put in your heart, say, Lord, I want to get right with you. Let's bow our heads. Close our eyes. Pastor.